business, forecasting involves making predictions about future trends, outcomes, or performance based on historical data, market analysis, and other relevant factors. It helps organizations to make informed decisions about budgeting, resource allocation, hiring, and strategy planning. In this new video, I will show you how we can leverage the brand new Databricks AI forecast functions to make predictions on sales data. Before we get started, let's understand what the function does and the four mandatory arguments. The AI forecast function is designed to extrapolate time series data into the future. It uses advanced artificial intelligence models to generate forecasts based on historical data and it is particularly useful for predicting metrics like sales, revenue or inventory levels. And let's see the four arguments. Now the first is observe. This will represent an input table containing the historical data to be used for forecasting which must include at least one time column and one or more value columns. And the second argument is horizon. This specifies the right exclusive end time for the forecast result. For example, 30 days revenue forecasting. It must be a valid timestamp, date, or string that can be cast into a timestamp and it defines the forecast period starting from the last observation in the data set. The third argument is the time call, and this is the name of the column in the observed table that represents time, which is expected to be of type, date, or timestamp. And the fourth mandatory argument is value call. The names of the columns in the observed table containing the values to be forecasted, which can be a single string or an array of string. The columns must be castable to double. So enough of all of this. Let's go into the practical side of how we can leverage the AI forecast function. Okay, so I am currently on the Welcome to Databricks landing page in my Databricks workspace. Now, the first thing I want to do is to launch the SQL editor because we want to be using the SQL warehouse in Databricks. After we launch that, we're going to create a table, insert some record into the table, and then we can deploy the AI forecast function to make predictions on our sales data and interpret the results in a business context. So, to do that, I'm going to click on the SQL editor on the left hand side. And then I've got this AI forecast demo editor. So I'm going to proceed to paste the create table and insert record into the editor. And let's see the content of the create table. Now the table name is going to be called fast food sales data. And we have the sales date with the date data type, total revenue with the decimal data type, item sold with the integer data type, average revenue per item with decimal and the top selling item with the string data type. So I can select this create table and press control enter to execute. So we can see in a matter of seconds, the table is now created. Now let's see where the table is actually domiciled. I'm gonna click on this refresh and I can come to the cornerstone analytics. I can click on the default schema and then we can see the table. And when I just wait for some seconds, I can see this flyover, which gives me more detail about the name of the owner, the popularity, that is how many times it has queried in the last 30 days, and then the updated time, which is about 18 seconds ago, and the size is unknown for now because we don't have any data. So I can come here and select all of this, insert into statement, and press Control Enter to run the code. And we can see number of affected rows is 39, the same thing as the number of inserted rows. Cool. Now I can go on and delete all of these and perform a simple select star on top of the fast food sales data. And let's limit to just 20 rows. We can select this code, hit the control enter, wait for some seconds, and then we have the data, which is absolutely cool. So we can see we have the sales date, total revenue, item sold average revenue per item and the top selling item, the same thing as the list of the products. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the AI forecast function, which primarily works with the common table expression in SQL. So to do that, I'm going to come here and I can perform the width keyword and I can give name to my CTE. I'm going to call this on sales prediction and use the ask keyword open bracket. Now, 
I can select my column. So for this, I want to select the sales date and the total revenue because these are what we needed for our AI forecast function to work. So I want to select this sales date and I'm going to wrap that inside a date function, open the bracket, and I can type in the name of the table or column and I can call this one DS. So that's going to be the alias as DS. And I'm going to put in a comma, press enter, and use the sum function on top of the total underscore revenue. And I'm going to also alias this as revenue. And I can put in, press enter, and use the from. I can call the name of the table, which is the fast food sales table or data. Press enter, and then press the tab key to align it properly. And then we can use the group by clause. So let me just use the group by day one because we just have the sales date in it so i can go on and use the select star from the sales prediction and when i run this code this is going to give us the standard um calculations to see the total sales by the date which is cool now there is nothing special in this now we want to see how we can use the ai forecast function now i'm going to actually get rid of this sales underscore prediction and use the ai underscore forecast now this is the standard forecast so open the brackets now i'm going to press enter as we've mentioned the first argument is the observe which is like a table value so i'm going to just type in table and open the brackets and i'm going to pass in this sales prediction in there so i can copy this i can come here and paste in it and i'm going to put in a comma press enter and then we want to go ahead and provide the horizon so we want to forecast for the next 30 days so i'm going to type in the horizon parameter or argument here so type in there and we're going to use the go to operator which is the equal to and the greater than and inside a single quote now before i provide the date value i'm going to scroll up now i'm going to come here and check the last date in our historical data so i can use the max function which is going to do that for me and i can call the name of the table sales date and i can go on and get rid of this limit for now i don't need it and select this control enter and let's see so the last date in our historical data is on the 25th of april 2025 cool so we want to start the prediction from the 26th of April that is going to focus for the next 30 days. So I'm going to come down here and in here, I'm going to type in 2025 and put in the dash. And since we want to focus for 30 days, I'm going to type in 05, that is the next month. And then I'm going to type in 26. This is going to give us the exact 30 days. So that's going to be the parameter for the horizon. And I'm going to put in a comma, press enter. And then we need the time underscore call. And then for this, I can use the go to operator again. And then this is going to be the DS that we define here. So inside the single quote, I'm going to type in DS and put in a comma. And then we also need the value call. So value call, and then for this, we're going to use the go to operator again, and they're going to pass in the rev alias that we provided for the sum of total revenue. So inside the single quote, I'm going to type in rev, and that is all we need to do. So I can go on and select all of this code and press control enter to run it. And there we go. So we have our prediction. It is absolutely fantastic and easy. So basically, we have all of these four columns. The first one is the DS, which is the specific date for which revenue is forecasted for the next 30 days. So we can see we have the revenue forecast for the 26th of April 2025 because our last historical date ends on the 25th of April. So we can see we have the revenue and then we can see the revenue forecast. This is the predicted value for the best selling revenue. And then we can see we have the upper bound and this is the forecast confidence interval representing the highest expected revenue based on the forecast models assumptions and then we also have the lower band which is also the confidence interval representing the lowest expected revenue for each of the day so when you look at this number clearly you can see we have 1722 for the revenue for forecast for the 26th and then we have the 2000 one two three for the upper band that is this is the highest we can actually achieve all things being equal if there's a lot of traffic or there's a lot of you know sales that we generated and then this is the lowest level we can achieve for the 25th if we are not getting enough of business or enough of you know revenue coming in so when you look at all of this number clearly we can see that the forecasted daily revenue ranges between 1570 and 1750 
for this in a stable revenue patterns. For example, we can see 1,573, and we can see um, 1,572, and so on and so forth. And then we can see some exceptional days. For example, when I go to the 24th of May, when I scroll down here, we can see we have this exceptional revenue that is forecasted, that is 1,900. 26 and when you also check on the 20 we can see this yield 1879 forecasted now this indicates a period of increased demand like events or seasonal patterns influencing demand and bringing in more revenue so we can also check the revenue upper bound and the lower bound that's cool so this is how we can easily make our predictions in the data breaks using the ai forecast function what about if we want to actually forecast for maybe some of the items we are selling we can also do that i'm going to quickly come back here and get rid of these and use the star and i can select all of this code so we have all of this item top selling let's want to forecast for the um, chicken nuggets i like that i'm going to click here copy this into the clipboard and i can come here i can just put in a clause here i can use the where clause so i can see where um, top selling product is equal to it's a double quote. I'm going to paste the chicken nuggets and I can go on and select all of this again. Press Ctrl Enter. So when I press Ctrl Enter, we're going to have a different forecast result for the top selling item that is the chicken nuggets. So for this, we can see we have quite some few data. So this actually being forecasted, we have um, for the 27th of April, and then we have the on the 1st of May and 5th. So these are being forecasted for, you know, for this interval. And then we can see the revenue forecast, the revenue upper and the lower bound. And that is absolutely cool. We can even add one more, you know, condition here or filter. So I can say where this is in chicken nuggets, or I can come here and use the same equals to fries i'm going to type in fries in there and i can go on and rerun the predictions so select all of these control enter and in a matter of some seconds we should have a different forecast result entirely amazing so we can see in this case we have 16 rows and then we can see the revenue forecast the revenue upper lower and so on and so forth so this basically allows us to make informed decisions to prioritize the allocation of resources to achieve our targets so i trust you enjoy this video if you do like comment and follow me for more amazing video on databricks thank you for watching bye for now